All right, so let's talk about connectivity. How are we gonna hook up all this fancy stuff we got to, uh, in this case, our display, our TV, our smart TV, what do you want to call it, your LCD, OLED, or some version in between. Uh, how are we gonna connect that? Uh, and this is where it gets tricky. Uh, and I, I'm hoping that we've solved this problem for you so you don't have to fight the fight I've been fighting as many of us have been fighting for, for such a long time. And that's the problematic connection in that you're getting 4K video from one source to the next. Uh, if you're doing it short, if you're doing a one meter, two meter run, it's really quite simple. If you start to get longer runs, which what many of us in our garage are gonna end up doing, uh, that's where it gets a bit problematic. So I'm hoping to solve that problem for you here. So uh, just to kind of give you a little background on how this happened, uh, I was uh, at my open house here earlier this year and uh, I'd been talking about I need to figure out what cables I'm gonna do uh, for for the, the store and for all these systems we're doing. And um, I don't even know where to start. You know, the, the old monster, in, in the old days, you just buy monster cable. Well, with the demise of monster cable, it's like, what do you do? There's Audio Quest, there's Kimber tributaries, and then there's all kinds of obscure off the wall brands. And uh, a couple of guys came and to, to open house and said, we've got your solution for you. And they're OG fans, so Austin and um, uh, the guys from Metra came over and said, hey, we're in Daytona uh, and uh, we specialize in HDMI, but we make a whole suite of cables. Uh, and so uh, we, this is, was like a little sister company to, you know, Metra is the company that makes all the, the kits for uh, putting head units in, in vehicles. And I think they have kind of seen the writing on the wall on that a number of years ago and that that business isn't nearly as big as it used to be. Uh, and so they've created a, a rather successful sister company that makes cables, starting with HDMI. And uh, I have to admit, you know, I was a cable junkie. Uh, I bought hook, line, and sinker, you know, cables and silver plated and gold plated and 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 high resolution and you know different different. And you can hear the difference and see the difference. And I've sold my fair share of fancy uh, cables that I've since moderated on. Uh, and uh, I think that if you have a bad cable, it can make a bad experience. But in general. Uh, especially as we've migrated to ones and zeros for most things. If the ones and zeros get there, that's all that matters. But what we've learned with HDMI over the years is that the ones and zeros will oftentimes have a tough time getting there. Uh, and so you need an appropriately um, quality cable to get the signal from point A to point B. And like I said, if you're running short distance, we don't need anything fancy. Uh, and so uh, what, through the advice of, um, of uh, Metra and through a little bit of testing with these cables for me, you know, I've been having problems with my systems over the last several years. I've done Blue Jeans cables, AudioQuest cables, uh, even some of the, the, the entry level AudioQuest stuff wasn't able to pass from the 4K signals I was hoping to get. And so um, I've been sort of struggling with, you know, what cable would I provide to you to give a good stamp of approval and, and to really feel confident that we're able to get the signal from point A to point B. And so through the advice of the guys from, uh, from Metra, uh, this is what I come up with. And I think this will be uh, sufficient. This will solve, you know, issues that we may have. So shorter lengths, um, we're using what they call their Ethereal cable. Uh, so there's Ethereal, and then we have Velux, and then we have Velux Fiber, and so they have different levels of HDMI cables. They have four or five different levels. I think this is like level three, uh, which I find to be sufficient. And so the Ethereal stuff, um, again, these are not, like you get this, and this doesn't feel like a, like a $300 cable. It's not, it's a relatively inexpensive cable. Solves the problem, get, gets what we need to get done. Uh, and so I'm stocking this in one meter, two meter, four meter, six meter, six meters, uh, roughly 20 feet. Uh, and so uh, as long as we, you know, stay under 20 feet, then this sort of uh, mid-level cable will be sufficient to pass 4K, 8K, pass anything we're gonna need to pass. Uh, and so where you wanna be concerned is if you're pre-wiring, if you're running wires through the wall, uh, you wanna be concerned if you're gonna run a six meter cable, you want it to work. Uh, and so under, you know, under 20 feet, 
um, the advice was, you know, now they do make these a little bit longer, but then it could potentially get a little dicey depending on the source component. Uh, HDMI, like I said, can be fickle. It can sometimes work, sometimes doesn't. Um, so these should be like a 98% good to go uh, work, you know, sufficiently for pretty much every, every environment. I'm stocking the six meter. If you're doing a permanent installation, um, I think, you know, hit us up. I think you'd want to run, uh, we can get we can get a Velux. I think if you're doing permanent in-wall, you don't have a conduit or something, I think we need to step up to their, their Velux. These are, these are the non, they're non-powered, a uh, little bit denser, a little bit more um, um, capable. It's funny because this is rated 18 gigabits plus and this is rated 48. Um, but this is a much thicker cable, has, um, I believe, a higher, a higher gauge. Uh, and so I'm stocking this in 32 feet. Uh, and so this, like, this is what I would have used in my garage at my house. And I ran it through the wall. I ended up using monoprice cable, and now it doesn't freaking work. And so I'm unable to send signal um, back and forth. The, the, the audio return channel doesn't work. So this is one of the risks, one of the mistakes where this, uh, if we ran this through the wall at my house, I wouldn't have an issue. Um, this was a, you know, a, a much better, much higher tested, much better quality, much um, a more capable cable. Now, if we're getting into longer runs, uh, so this is a, these are all passive cables. So there's no power, there's no external power needed uh, to pass the signal. But if we're getting into longer runs, we could probably run this longer, but with a much greater level of accuracy. Um, you know, this is a really expensive cable. This is like, I want to say $400 plus dollars. Don't hold me to the prices because I'm sure they're going to change drastically over the next, you know, several years. And this video will live for a long time. So just go to obsessedcross.com. We have all the pricing there. But this is a, a fiber optic powered cable, so much more sophisticated. Um, this is uh, optical connection. You want to be careful. You don't, you know, it's a plastic filament. You don't want to kink it or crack it. Um, you still pretty pliable, very easily run through the walls. Uh, but this cable has some, um, has some screwed on uh, uh, posts to, to bind it, to lock it in place. You know, if your, if your device has a, you know, has a threaded uh, connection, like, like some, you know, especially custom install uh, equipment does. But then the key is it comes with two um, little AC to DC adapters uh, and two USB connections. And on, on the uh, inlet to the cable, um, you also have a, um, a power connection. Uh, you have a, you have a, um, it's a little uh, 16th, inch, 16th inch, I believe, a uh, little power connection. Uh, and so the cable is, um, is going to be um, much more accurate. Again, the quality of the signal getting there isn't any different. So especially with HDMI, if the ones and zeros make it there, uh, you're, you're good to go. Uh, the quality of the signal, very different than analog, which has more noise introduction possibility. This uh, is just, it just needs to get there. And it needs to get there with all of the information, all the packets in order to be able to process for your, your input output to be able to process the signal. Uh, outputting properly and then inputting properly on the, on the receiving device. Uh, and so this fiber optic powered cable uh, is what we need if you're going to run longer runs. So this is a 50 foot or 15 meter, just shy of 15, 50 feet. Uh, this is what we need if we're doing an application where we're running uh, in your garage. And I'm stocking these three, but I can vary, or these, uh, these three types of cables and these various lengths but I can get you whatever you need. So if you just hit up support at obsessedgarage.com, um, these are what we have in a box, on the shelf, in stock, ready to go. Um, this is what we need for setting up the audio return channel. Uh, and uh, if we're doing any kind of video sources, like in my garage, I have an M33 as my, my sort of preamp or amplifier, or receiver, if you will. Uh, and then I've got my TV that's 25 feet away, uh, and so I needed to run a cable through the wall. My cable doesn't work, and so um, I don't get to be able to use it in the fashion that I'd hoped. Uh, and so I have to use a bunch of different remotes and do some clunky stuff. Uh, and so we'll make sure that doesn't happen to you um, and uh, get you the right cables to run through the wall. So hit us up, support at obsessedgarage.com. We can help you pick the right cable. and. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm hoping to have these uh, in the store for, you know, the, the ability to be able to build complete systems for the garage. And if you need some help with your house, I can help you there too.
Thanks for watching. Thank you for your support. Go to obsessgarage.com. Hit us up if you have questions. See you soon.